Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is the Google Ads API webinar. Uh, my name is Adam Oren. I'm a developer advocate here at Google. And I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm going to switch over to slides here, so you're probably not going to see too much of me for the rest of this presentation. You're just going to hear my voice. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to get some um, administrative you out of the way. This is the second live event that we're doing today. We did another one of these about 12 hours ago. So if you tuned in to the last webinar, no need to tune in for this one. Literally, it's going to be the exact same content, exact same deck. So you can get another um, uh, about an hour of your life back if you want that. Um, so I want to thank you all for tuning in. And um, I'm going to switch over here to the slides, and we're going to get started. Um, here we go. So first of all, I wanted to bring your attention to the banner at the top of the screen that introduces the Q&A. Uh, I posted a link in the chat for this live stream uh, about 15 minutes ago with the link there too, so you don't have to actually copy this off the video. I know it's not very clickable in its present form. So I'd encourage you to open that up now, um, open, keep that in the window side by side, and what that's going to allow you to do is ask questions uh, as they come up over the presentation. Um, I've pre-populated it with some questions. You see the questions in there that have been submitted by myself. Those are questions that have been um, asked ahead of time. You know, when we set out the invitation for the uh, webinars, we asked if anybody had any questions that they wanted to get answered. So in there, there are some pre-populated questions. Feel free to use a little thumbs up and upvote any questions in there that you also have and that you'd like to get answers to, uh, or add your own as we go through the presentation. And then at the end, I'm going to have a Q&A session, and we're just going to go through the list and give you guys answers to any and all questions that show up in that list. OK, so let's get started. Real quick, the agenda of what I'm going to cover today. Uh, I'm going to give you an introduction to the Google Ads API. What is this, and what is the beta program that we just started? Uh, then we're going to go through how you go about setting up API access, uh, the steps involved. It's not too complicated, but just want to delineate them so you know what they are. Uh, then we're going to talk about how you can make your first API call. Uh, we're going to leverage the example code uh, that we have, uh, and we're going to download. Uh, show you how to download and where you can download the code examples, our client libraries, and actually issue a call to the new Google Ads API. Finally, our last section is going to go into an uh, overview of the API concepts, uh, talk a little bit about this new Google Ads API and how it's different from the existing AdWords API. Uh, finally, can I display a whole bunch of resources and links? Uh, I know this may not be the best format since it's a video um, to show you a whole bunch of links, but I want to at least show you where the resources are. Uh, we're going to post a PDF or something of this presentation afterward, so you're going to be able to get a clickable version of this presentation with all the links that are embedded in it. Uh, I just don't have a link to that right now. We're probably going to post it on the blog or somewhere else, so keep your eyes peeled when we're done. Uh, with the webinars, and we will get this PDF uh, PDF version of this out to you so you have that for your reference. And then finally, after the resources section, we're going to get into the Q&A. OK, so introducing the Google Ads API. The next generation of the AdWords API is on its way. If anything, that's the big takeaway from this right here. Um, and if any of you have been using the AdWords API at all or for an extended period of time, you know that it's uh, it's been about 10 years since the initial release was uh, was pushed out in its current form. Uh, we've been dealing with a SOAP API in a modern world, and SOAP is a little bit long in the tooth. And in the, this day and age of RESTful uh, API interfaces and things like that, uh, it's a little bit tough having to parse XML and deal with SOAP client libraries, uh, especially environments like Node.js and Go that didn't quite exist back when SOAP was in its heyday. Um, the new Google Ads API finally brings the, um, the power of AdWords and its API into the modern era. So introducing the Google Ads API, let's get a quick uh, overview of the features that you can expect. Uh, first of all, it is a modern API architecture. Uh, it is built on the same stack and API architecture that all our other Google Cloud APIs are built on. Um, it exposes both gRPC and JSON REST interfaces. And the API itself is integrated directly within the Google Developer Console. So that means that you're going to find this API as a first-class citizen, along with all our other cloud APIs, uh, as far as the management console goes, and as far as its API infrastructure. So it behaves very much like a citizen of all the other Google APIs out there. Secondly, the next big thing here is a unified API data model. Uh, this allows us to give you support for complex queries 
using something called the Google Ads query language, which if you use the current AdWords API, it's a lot like the AdWords query language. It's a SQL-like language that allows you to query uh, the API and pull back data. Um, and it's a lot more powerful and pulled front and center in the Google Ads API, whereas in the AdWords API, it's a feature that's there, but it's not necessarily central to how things work. Um, in the Google Ads API, the Google Ads query language is a central feature that allows you to pull back both metrics for reporting and AdWords entities, like campaigns, ad groups, and ads in a unified way. So we sort of have a unified retrieval service here um, with a SQL-like language that allows you to pull both stats and metrics and the AdWords entities and the impressions clicks um, and things like that you'd find in reports in a single unified fashion. Uh, we're gonna go into a little bit more of what that means when we get to um, the, uh, the concepts overview section later, but this is a central feature and makes developer experience, I think, a lot easier and more unified in this API. Uh, finally, you get scalable data downloads. Um, what this means is you can get support for streaming very large results back as page data sets across the API. Uh, if you So if you've been working with the AdWords API, you know it can get very tedious and a little bit cumbersome when you have to deal with uh, large data downloads, especially with our reporting services. So with AdWords, a lot of times uh, you're dealing with a very large number of objects. For instance, you could have an AdWords account that has tens of thousands of campaigns. Each campaign may have thousands, tens of thousands of its own keywords. And if you're trying to get uh, an account-wide keyword performance report or something like that, you could, be, you could wind up pulling down a report that has millions of rows. And sometimes that can be a little bit crazy to try to process that. Um, you can run into infrastructure issues when you try to actually download that. Um, the new API supports page download data sets. So anytime you have to pull up big data set down from the Google Ads API, you can specify a page size. Say, I want 1,000 rows at a time. And so each time you make a request, it'll give you that 1,000 rows, batch them up. And then when you're ready for the next 1,000 rows, just make another API call and say, get me the next page. So it allows you, <clears throat> in, it allows you to iterate through large data sets like that uh, in, in a unified way across the API, whereas in the AdWords API, there was some support for that in certain services, but it definitely wasn't a central feature um, built into the API itself. OK, so that's sort of a 10,000-foot glance of uh, the features that are um, and the um, the good things about the Google Ads API. So let's take a look at the beta program that we just released and what's going on um, with how we're getting it to you. So on April 23rd, we released the beta release of the Google Ads API. This is sort of our V0, um, and there are other versions planned, um, incremental updates as the beta program goes on. Um, so just to put that in perspective, that was released after version 2018.02 of the AdWords API. And we're going to have both versions of the APIs, of these two APIs, the new Google Ads API and the existing AdWords API, existing side by side as uh, 2018 goes on. So our release schedule dictates we're going to have V2018.06 coming out very soon of the existing AdWords API, and then later in the year, V2018.09. Uh, both of those are going to come out and get released as they normally would uh, as the beta program coexists. And we're going to proceed this way with both tracks of the APIs existing side by side as we exit 2018 and go into 2019. So just because we're releasing it like this, uh, that also doesn't mean that the, the Google Ads API is going to be in beta forever. So let's look at how the Google Ads API is going to progress over time. Uh, we've released V0, um, and that's a core set of features. And so the important thing to understand here is not all features are there in the current beta of the Google Ads API. In fact, it's a very limited subset. Um, we will go into exactly what's exposed in a, uh, a next slide or two here. Um, but I want to hit home the fact that we're going to be approaching feature parity over time as the beta program evolves. So we started with these core set of features, and we're going to be releasing incremental updates as the beta program progresses. And these should be fairly fast follow. Uh, you should be seeing another incremental release of the current beta um, Google Ads API relatively soon in the um, upcoming weeks. So these should be fast follow increments. So we have started with V0. We're going to get V01, V02, V03 um, as we approach sort of V1, which would be when, I guess, the um, Google Ads API comes out of beta. So we're going to keep in releasing those incremental updates until we get to full feature parity with the AdWords API. Uh, and at that time, we're going to have we'll still have both APIs existing side by side, but they will be first class peers at that point. You're, you're not going to be able to find anything in the uh, current AdWords API that is not yet um, in the uh, the new Google Ads API beta. 
So what's in the current beta release? And by the current beta release, I mean the V0 that was released on April 23rd and that you can actually start playing with right now. Um, here's just a laundry list, just gonna go through them real quick. Uh, it's so mainly what the, the support here is for search campaigns and search campaigns only. So we have create, update, and remove operations are supported for search campaigns in this beta release. Uh, you can also manage the associated campaign budgets. You can manage ad groups in all these search campaigns, and we support five different kinds of ads uh, for the search campaigns. Uh, we also provort, pr provide support in the API currently for both standard and shared bidding strategies, and we allow you to set up targeting uh, using keywords uh, in the campaigns that um, are supported. You can retrieve, retrieve detailed advertiser information um, via the customer service, which is analogous to the also similarly and same named customer service in the AdWords API, uh, mainly account um, client account information like uh, the, the time zone and the currency code for the account. Uh, and you can get uh, various reports uh, or various metrics um, from a reporting endpoint uh, for search campaigns. Um, and you get these in a, in a new way, and that's one of the new things that's different about this API that we're going to go into that I think everyone's going to like. Uh, so the key takeaway here is search is supported. Um, other campaigns like shopping or display campaigns are not yet supported by this, uh, the current uh, incremental release of the API, but uh, future releases will, will increase the support for campaign types. And you're going to see this list expand as the beta program moves on. So speaking of the beta program, uh, I just want to go over some benefits of why you join the want to join the beta and why we're doing this. Uh, primarily so you can stay ahead of the game and get a technology preview of what's coming. Uh, you can get your products ready to support uh, either gRPC or um, a JSON REST interface. Uh, the the new API is is modern in that way, and so we, we want we want our uh, developers to be able to understand what's coming ahead of time, understand the implications for their the products. And you know, if you have environments that aren't necessarily amenable to SOAP, um, this is I think a great opportunity to explore how a modern cloud based um, API that represents AdWords can actually integrate into your business in a much more streamlined fashion. Um, secondly, this is actually even more important. You can provide feedback to our engineering team and influence the new Google Ads API. Uh, this is a beta program. We're our engineers are still building this API. So uh, the cake is not already uh, baked, so to speak. So you have a lot of um, leverage here, and we have an opportunity to actually implement your feedback and make sure that we're developing the API and features that you want. So we have various forms that that feedback can be delivered us, uh, to us in, um, from the form to sign up for the API, which we're gonna get to in a second, through um, various uh, feedback questionnaires that we're gonna be releasing and, and either direct email support or our forum. So please provide us feedback when we ask for it, even if it sounds silly, like what programming language you're using or what you're, what you're doing with the API, even if it's not that specific, every little bit helps. And uh, I promise you it gets to us and we're trying to make decisions that impact you in the most positive way. So this is how we do it. Um, so please, feedback is very important. Um, you can try out new features such as the Google Ads query language. Um, I alluded to this on a previous slide. Um, this is similar to the existing uh, AdWords query language in the current uh, AdWords API. Uh, it's a SQL-like language that allows you to query um, the API and get back both um, objects and stats, which in a unified way, which is different from the AdWords API. So it's a really powerful and flexible feature of the new API, and that's why we bring it up here as sort of like a top-level feature that you're going to need to get yourself um, used to and get familiar with because it has a lot of benefits here. And to that end, you can get an early start on experimenting with using the API to download query metrics and immediately send back results as mutates. What does that mean? Uh, so if you're an existing user of the AdWords API, you know that we have sort of two separate uh, uh, stacks of, of endpoints. We have our reporting endpoints and we have our mutate endpoints, and they're very different. The mutate endpoints are SOAP-based and the reporting endpoints allow you to download sort of CSV tabular data that correspond to the AdWords reports. Uh, the new Google Ads API uh, via a centralized query service and using this Google Ads query language allow you to pull back both the stats and their corresponding entities together. So if you want to pull back, say, a list of campaigns with their impressions, clicks, um, and conversions from the new, the new API, you can you can specify that in sort of a single SQL-like statement and get back a result set that instead of being a, a tabular CSV list, you actually get um, full-fledged campaign objects with their associated metrics that you ask for. And those 
those full, fully built campaign objects can actually be passed directly back to our mutate services. So you can, for instance, query um, for all campaigns that have clicks above um, of 20 in the last seven days, and then immediately return that result set back to the um, to mutate service and pause all those campaigns without having to reconstruct the parameters uh, for the for an API call like that. So it's extremely flexible and enables some much easier developer workflows than you have in the existing um, AdWords API. Okay, so let's talk about real quick how you set up access and get access to this new API. It's relatively simple, but I want to walk through the steps just to make sure um, it's painfully obvious to everyone and we don't um, uh, miss anything. Basically, the three components here, you have to join the beta. Um, this is key. Uh, it whitelists you for access in the beta. You're, it's, the API is not just going to work if you're not technically enrolled in the beta. Um, so secondly, after you do that, you have to enable the API in the Google Developer Console. This is the same step you have to go through if you want to enable any of our other cloud-based APIs that exist out there in the current developer ecosystem. Uh, and then finally, you have to create an OAuth client ID. Um, this configures the authentication mechanism, and this is also something that you had to do when you were using uh, the AdWords API. But now that the Google Ads API lives in the Google Developer Console, this is sort of part of the setup process and lives in the same space as all these other setup steps. So it kind of elevates this as, to sort of a project setup task um, and provisions access and authentication um, for your API use. So I'm just going to walk really quickly through um, these three steps. So first of all, join the beta. Very easy, fill out a form, that's it. Like I said, I know the video is not very amenable to clicking on things, but here's the link, developers.google.com slash google-ads slash API slash sign up dash form. Now this is an open beta. Anybody can go and fill up this form. We're not gating access here as long as you have um, an existing developer token and a manager account um, for AdWords. Uh, that's pretty much all you need. You can fill out this form. So let's look at the different pieces of this form. Um, the four bits of information that we ask for, only two bits are mandatory. Uh, the first one is your manager account customer ID or your MCC ID. So if you have a developer token, uh, which you must have, um, we need the MCC ID of the MCC that's associated with your developer token. Um, so that's in the manager account. If you In the AdWords UI, if you click on the little gear icon on top um, and then go to the API center, uh, and see your developer token, We need that's the MCC ID that we need, so we know exactly who to whitelist. Um, and secondly, this is, this. Um, so, so that's the first piece of information. You fill that out at the top of the form. The second piece of information is your developer contact email it needs to be up to date in the AdWords API Center. This sounds like a silly thing, but it's not, and that's why it's in, it's a big mandatory step here in bright red with a star next to it in the form. Uh, this is how we get in contact with you if we have any questions about the uh, about your API usage, if we want feedback. Um, if any of the myriad of things that go along with being in the beta program, we're going to use the developer email that you have configured in the AdWords API Center. So it's imperative that this doesn't go to dev null. You know, this doesn't go to an email list that nobody monitors. It has to be a person um, that will get these emails if we need to reach out to you and get in touch with you. So please, please, please follow the instructions. Double check uh, that it's actually a valid email that you're going to get, um, or somebody at your company is going to get email and can and uh, can get back to us if need be. And check that box. Um, the last two bits of information are optional, but this is again where I say feedback is very important. Um, we'd like to know what programming language you're using. This is going to gauge interest on which client libraries we roll out support for and prioritize, and when. Uh, and also help us understand the needs of the client ecosystem that's out there if we need to build out support for additional um, for instance, client libraries that we weren't planning on doing um, for languages that we may not have planned on supporting. Here's your chance to let us know what you're doing. Um, and to that end of what you're doing, there's a separate box here for you to put in just a free form explanation of what, how do you plan to use the new API. Um, put whatever you need to in here. Um, anything would be helpful. Like if we're implementing um, a shopping campaign integration, or we create display campaigns to run banner ads, or we're pulling metrics for a customer in a reporting dashboard that does X, Y, and Z. Um, knowing what features of the API our developers are using and are interested in helps us prioritize the features for those, understand what's most important for the developer ecosystem out there. So please, we do take this seriously. and. We, especially since we're building this API as we speak and we have teams working on all different parts of it, the more information we get from you guys, the more, um, the better that we're kind of prioritized work um, that coincides with exactly um, what your needs are. So please, if you can, fill that information in. It will help us a lot. Okay, so once you filled out and submitted that form, 
Next step is to enable the API in the Google Developer Console. Now, this is something new that you didn't have to do in the AdWords, um, current AdWords API because it didn't live in the, uh, the Google Developer Console like um, all of our other uh, modern APIs did. Uh, so to do this, you go to console.developer.google.com. And you either have an existing project, for example, if you have an AdWords integration that has been using other APIs that do live in this console, it's a very good chance you may have an existing project configured. If not, no problem. Create, uh, you can create a new project. Um, like in, um, in the screenshot here, my new project. Just create a new project there. Um, once you have a project that's sort of a container uh, for the APIs that are um, enabled and all the other settings in the Google Developer Console that you can configure. Um, so once you do that, um, in it to actually enable the Google Ads API, uh, navigate to APIs and Services on the left and go into the Library menu. That'll bring up a search box where literally type in the words Google Ads API, uh, and it should be the very first one that pops up there, Google Ads API with the AdWords logo. Uh, manage your AdWords accounts, campaigns, reports within REST-based API. Select that one and click the Enable button. It will bring up that little button and click Enable, and that will actually kick off a little spinner, and a few seconds later it should say, boop, API is enabled, and and so that you've actually provisioned access to the API. So that, along with the um, the uh, filled out um, beta form, which whitelists you to actually have access to the beta, um, are the steps you need in order to get access to the API. Um, so the third step is creating an OAuth client ID. So once those other two steps are done, this is the last step you need to do to sort of configure things in the developer console. And then once you're done here. Um, you should be able to go to our client libraries and actually start making calls. So you want to create an OAuth client ID. This generates a client ID and client secret pair, which are basically the configuration parameters that um, all our, for example, our supplied client libraries need in order to generate uh, OAuth tokens for you. Or if you're going to be using another method, um, you need to pass these uh, parameters um, via the manual OAuth flow that you set up. Um, so it's important to set this up now. We support, so, so OK, to do this in the developer console, um, there's an option to create credentials. So click the Create Credentials button, and you have an option of, you have three different choices here, API key, OAuth client ID, or service account. Uh, you want to, don't do API key. We don't support that. Uh, service account, we do have some limited support for service accounts, but not in this v0 implementation um, of the Google Ads API and not in the, exist, uh, in, in the existing client libraries that have been released for v0. So that's sort of a special case right now, and we have limited support um, for it in the current incarnation of the beta. So please choose OAuth client ID. And once you do that, you have an option, either web application flow or installed application. Uh, in this, in this um, chooser that comes up, installed application is represented by the other option on the bottom. So um, web application is ideal if you're going to be prompting users for their own credentials and managing sort of a credential store on behalf of other clients. So if you're going to be doing that, web application flow is for you. If not, you're going to be using a manager account um, to authenticate and manage client accounts within your MCC. Um, we'd recommend using installed application flow. And that's sort of the recommended flow if you don't have a reason uh, to otherwise use web application flow, because then you're just handling sort of one set of credentials for your MCC, and it gives you access to everybody in, underneath it. You don't have to handle um, credentials for multiple users. So if you don't have a reason to use web application flow, uh, choose the other and choose installed application flow. Once you click uh, create, you will be shown a client ID and client secret. And these are the bits of information that you need, for example, to configure a client library. So once you have these, write these down, keep these handy, because you're going to need these to start using the client libraries. OK, once that's done, um, setup is complete. You are configured. Um, the Google Ads API is ready for business. So that gives us to the second um, the second section here, making your first API call. Uh, we're going to walk through the steps on how you can actually uh, leverage our example code library to make an API call. Um, so before we do that, here are the prerequisites. Uh, I well, Something I mentioned before is you need an approved developer token. So if you're using the existing AdWords API, you know that you have in a developer token. Um, that you need to get and um, specifically um, request in the AdWords API interface for your manager account. Um, that's not changing with the Google Ads API. Developer tokens are still required, and you need to send them as a header in all your requests. So if not, if you don't have a developer token, that's fine. It's uh, getting one approved for test account usage is as straightforward as going into your MCC in your manager account, clicking that little wrench icon in the upper right corner, going to AdWords API Center, and 
say request developer token, um, almost immediately you will get one for test account access. There are different tiers of access. Um, that's a little bit beyond the scope of this talk, but for the purposes of making a, um, a call to test accounts and using it in a test environment, um, go in there, configure a developer token, and you will get one um, pretty much right away that you can use. So it's fairly easy to get an approved developer token for use, at least in that limited scope. Um, the second thing you need is a client customer ID. So this is the ID of a, an account that you're actually going to try to um, manipulate. And finally, you need the client ID and client secret um, that we just configured in the previous section. So in order to make a call, you want to download one of our client libraries and its associated examples project. You want to configure the client environment with the information that we just talked about. And then you can run an example. Um, we're going to run the get campaigns example. That's what we're going to walk through here. Um, so download a client library in the example project. Where does this stuff live? Um, this is a similar. We have a similar layout to our new documentation, client libraries, and examples as the AdWords API docs. So go to developers.google.com slash Google dash ads API docs client libs. We currently have Java, .NET, and Ruby supported. Um, we have plans for other client um, libraries, um, fast follow, and another incremental release. So this list is going to expand in the very near future. But that's what's out there now. Um, so you can go to the download a client example, uh, a client library, and download an example project um, that's hosted on GitHub. Those are the two things you, you need. So let's, I want to just talk real quick about the code examples that we supply. Um, in each of these uh, libraries, you're going to find one, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to find six different directories um, of example folders um, from account management to advanced operations. Um, we have these in all three languages. And these are actually analogous to the same example code you find in the existing AdWords API. And we did that on purpose. So you can actually do a diff. Look at the left side and the right side. You can look at the AdWords API code example. You can look at the Google Ads API code example and see exactly what's changed. So from the account management to you know, doing things um, like retrieving and updating account information, um, creating campaigns, um, creating ads, um, querying um, reports and stuff. Uh, the reporting, like I said, has changed a little bit. So the reporting example would be particularly useful to look at. Um, so when we have um, these links that here to all the different client um, libraries will be clickable when we get you a PDF version of this. But I just wanted to give a brief example of what's there. If you're an existing user of the AdWords API, these directories should look familiar. And that's a good thing. You can compare them and see how everything's changed. OK. Once you have a client library downloaded uh, in the example folder, you're going to need a client ID and client secret. Um, you're going to need a refresh token. Um, a refresh token, it can be generated in a number of ways. Um, these are an OAuth tokens that are generated from the client ID and client secret. Um, the easiest way, actually, I'm going to go back a slide um, and talk about the authentication directory and the code examples. In each one of these um, client library distributions, we're going to have um, a code sample in the authentication folder that allows you to actually invoke the client, um, the, the OAuth client workflow and generate a refresh token. So that's a perfect way to do it. Um, you can so once you have the code example directory download, navigate to the authentication folder and run the example that corresponds to either the web application flow or the installed application flow, which everyone needs to set up. And you can use that example to actually generate a refresh token for use here. And finally, your developer token. So in Java, it's a properties file, just like it is um, and .NET, actually. Both of these are, um, actually, I think all three of these might be the same way of configuring this. They are now in the AdWords API. Um, so in Java, you configure these in an adds properties file. In .NET, it's an app config. And in Ruby, you can edit the, the inline code snippet here and insert the required properties. So once you have that all configured, um, you're free to run an example. The one that we recommend, sort of the canonical example here, is the get campaigns. Uh, it's in the basic operations directory in all three of these distributions. Um, and literally what it does is it just gets you a list of campaigns that are in the client account that you specify. Um, so one thing to note that since the current v0 only supports search campaigns if you run this on an, uh, an account that has like display campaigns shopping campaigns you're only going to get a list of the search campaigns back that's a known issue that's okay and that's because the current version of the beta this v0 um, only supports search campaigns so um, you may have a weird campaign count you know you may have 10 account uh, campaigns in an account only five are search campaigns so you run get campaigns you're only going to see five campaigns that's normal that will expand and work um, more normally, and you get the results you expect as we roll out support for campaigns other than search. So here's something new, and here's something fun. You can actually try this from the command line using curl. Uh, this is something you couldn't do, obviously, with the SOAP client libraries. But now that we have both gRPC and um, 
RESTful endpoints, you can actually invoke one of the RESTful endpoints instead of using the client libraries, which um, use the uh, gRPC interfaces. So here's an example of what that would look like um, on the command line. Um, again, you need um, the same, uh, or actually similar, similar pieces of information. You need your developer token, the customer ID, and here you need an OAuth access token. So this is sort of the next token generated um, in the OAuth flow. So in the previous example in our client libraries, we use a refresh token. That generally doesn't expire and allows you to create as many access tokens as you need. Um, when you run something like this from uh, the command line, you actually need what's more what's downstream of the, ref the refresh token, the sort of temporal ephemeral access token. Um, so one way to generate that, just gonna pop up a tip here, use the OAuth playground. Um, we have a guide specifically on how to do this um, for Google Ads API. So Google dash ads slash API docs slash OAuth slash playground. I'd recommend checking this out. This is a great, the OAuth playground is a tool that's not specific to the Google Ads API, but it, it's an interactive way to interact with the OAuth machinery. So you can plug in the client ID and client secret that you generated in the developer console into an interactive um, browser window here and actually generate both refresh and access tokens and use them in examples um, like this. So this is what I'd recommend if you're going to be playing around with the um, the client lib or with the um, Google Ads API via curl, um, whip up the OAuth playground in a separate window and you can manage your tokens that way. It makes it much easier. So once you once you so this is an example of using the um, the unified uh, Google Ads query language that I mentioned before. So it's just like a very uh, SQL-like statement. Um, you're issuing a query that says select campaign ID, campaign name from campaign, order by campaign ID. And you will get back a results object that has um, one or more campaign objects. And they look like this. They are um, RESTful JSON objects, uh, campaign with a resource name, and it has the properties that you asked for. Um, and in this case, um, a status of enabled. So yeah, this is how you actually can uh, use REST to invoke uh, the Google Ads API, something new and something a lot more fun than having to wrangle with um, SOAP and XML. OK, so let's go in a little bit to the API concepts um, and how they work and exactly what's going on here. A lot of this is going to rhyme uh, with what you know from the AdWords API, and that's that's on purpose. We're not changing the underlying um, sort of uh, data model of how AdWords works, how the API works, was changing the protocols and the API infrastructure. So a lot of this should seem very familiar, but let's go through it and see how all these concepts that you may be familiar with map to the new API. So the API primarily consists of resources and services. Resources represent an AdWords entity, like a customer, a campaign, um, an ad group, an ad. Um, and so they have corresponding services that allow you to both retrieve and manipulate those entities. So that's actually a very similar concept to the existing AdWords API, where you have a customer campaign ad group ad like you have here, and customer service campaign service and ad group ad service. Now, each AdWords entity is a top-level resource, and it's identified by a resource name. Now, this is something that's actually a little bit different. In the AdWords API, everything was identified by its singular um, integral ID, so like a customer ID, a campaign ID, an ad group ID, things like that. Um, the, primary, the primary identifier in the Google Ads API is actually a resource name. And this has to do with how we expose this and name things um, in, in the RESTful interface and the architecture of the API. So a customer object, instead of being represented by just the customer ID, is represented by a resource name, which is actually a string, string customer slash customer ID. Campaign, for example, its resource ID is customers slash whatever the number customer ID is slash campaigns slash campaign ID. So the the um, the bold italicized camel case here, you actually um, insert the IDs of the objects that you're actually interested in. Um, one one thing I want to point out here is we have some entities or some resources here that use sort of a composite of IDs in the resource name. So ad group ad is one of them. If you look at the end of the resource name, you see it's ad group ID underscore ad ID. And that underscore is actually literal. So you're going to have some number, which is the ad group ID, underscore the actual ad ID when you're referring to an ad group ad. And one of the reasons we have to do this is if you're familiar with the the with AdWords and the AdWords API, ad IDs are not necessarily unique um, across the AdWords ecosystem. What's unique is the ad group ID and add ID pair. So when you're specifying um, a resource name like this and a string like this, we need both of them to actually uniquely um, disambiguate um, what you're referring to. So in cases like that, we have a composite ID 
uh, embedded in the resource name that's separated by an underscore. Just wanted to call that out there. Okay, so let's look at the corresponding services used to manipulate them. So for customer campaign and ad group ad, you add a suffix, a service suffix onto the end. Um, correspondingly, these, cor these services correspond to endpoints that look like this um, in the REST environment. So to categorize what we're looking at here, on the left-hand side, these are the gRPC endpoint names that you deal with when you're using the client libraries. Uh, and if you're not using the client libraries, if you're using the RESTful interface, uh, on the right here, this is what the these are the RESTful endpoints uh, that these services translate to. So this actually gives you a good idea of why we actually have um, so sort of like a proliferation of services like this. Why is there a customer service, campaign service, ad group ad service? Well, if you look at how um, the RESTful endpoints are um, implemented and how called, each one sort of has its own REST endpoint and that corresponds to a service. So it's not as crazy as it sounds having all these services because if you think about how the REST model is implemented, uh, each one of these would be a separate um, REST endpoint. And so that's how you have to think of these services. They're sort of they're, uh, all unique endpoints. So let's go uh, one step deeper. So each one of these services or endpoints uh, has methods. And again, this is a, a, fam a familiar concept that that should resonate from the AdWords API. So the campaign service has both a get and a mutate. Agrib ad service has a get and a mutate. Um, the get methods are used for retrieving data and mutate is used for changing. Uh, and so if you look at how this translates uh, into the REST endpoints, um, you have custom HTTP uh, or custom REST verbs here um, that are appended to the end. So campaigns, a get for campaigns is just customer ID um, slash campaigns slash whatever the campaign ID is. Um, the mutate would be campaigns colon mutate. Uh, it's a custom custom REST verb, and that's how it's that's how those are implemented in the REST um, endpoint. So one thing I want to call out while we're looking at this and how these things map is the get methods are actually designed to be used sparingly for debugging or exploratory low volume traffic. Uh, we're not actually exposing these get endpoints to be used as sort of the regular uh, API flow. Um, instead, we have the the Google Ads query language and a unified query service, which we're going to get to in a second, um, that's specifically designed for that because they're much more versatile and they're much more high performance. One of the reasons we don't want you using the get endpoints like this is if you're trying to do a whole bunch of gets for, for example, campaigns uh, across a uh, an account that has tens of thousands of campaigns in it, uh, you're going to have to do tens of thousands of um, get requests. Um, and similarly for the other service services. Uh, we, and we don't want you to do that, and you shouldn't have to do that. The Google Ads um, query language is, and the unified query service is designed to handle sort of um, complex object hierarchies ex um, and the fields that you want, and allow to be able, and designed to be able to return a whole bunch of objects in a single request instead of having to iterate through back and forth of a lot of different REST calls just to sort of mimic that functionality. So please don't. The get, the get methods are there, but they're designed to be used sparingly, and we have a much better way of getting data back from the API. OK, but before we get there, uh, just a quick note on using the mutate uh, methods. Um, this is, again, similar to how the AdWords API works now. Um, each mutate method here accepts both a customer ID. So this is the customer ID that you want to um, to act on. Uh, so in the form of, so just going back in the form of a RESTful endpoint, you know, this is actually embedded in the URL. When you call gRPC, um, it's part of the request as a customer ID, and then you get a list of operations. Um, and the important part here is that this list of operations can be very large, and it can be um, of many different types. So it supports multiple create, update, or remove operations um, in a single mutate call. So this actually makes the API very flexible. Um, instead of having to, you know, if, if these were all just implemented with normal HTTP verbs that had um, very unique scoping to a single API call, um, you, may, you may have to make um, 500 round trip API calls to update, create, or remove 500 different um, campaign objects. Not so by doing using mutate methods in this fashion. You can actually bundle them all together in a giant operations array. Um, and in this, like in this example, you have a create and a remove um, bundled together in the same call. So a single API call can affect many, many um, different mutates. Um, so this is extremely high performance way of doing things that sort of gets around the inefficiency of having to make tons and tons of small API calls to affect um, large batch changes. 
Okay, so let's get to how you retrieve data. And one of the most exciting, I think, aspects of this new Google Ads API. You retrieve data with the Google Ads service. Now, the Google Ads service is a uh, is the unique the unified object retrieval and reporting service. So whereas before I was saying how every resource has a corresponding service, you'll notice this service doesn't have a corresponding resource. This is a centralized um, uh, query service designed for one thing only, and for, and due to that, it has a custom method called search. Uh, can be invoked. So on the gRPC side, you have the search method, and on the rest. Um, endpoint side, it looks like this. Um, you have Google Ads colon search in order to invoke it. Now, what do you pass to the search method? This is where that Google Ads query language comes into play. Uh, the Google Ads query language is a SQL-like language and very similar to the existing AdWords query language in the, the current AdWords API. It allows you to query and retrieve combined attributes and objects across all entities. So take a look at this, the SQL-like statement that we have here. Um, we're selecting campaign name, campaign status, device, and then a whole bunch of metric objects like impressions, click CTR, average um, um, CPC from campaign where date during the last 30 days. So this is pulling both campaign information, a device segmentation, and a whole bunch of impression metrics uh, in a single query. And when you issue this query, the, here's how the data comes back. You get a list of Google Ads rows, and each one of these corresponds to sort of a line item, you know, a, you know, a, 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 kind of like a row um, in the, if you think of it as like, like a, uh, you're querying a database, each one of these is a, is a row corresponding um, to one of the results. And inside here, you have campaign, device, and metrics objects. So the metrics objects, you know, has all the fields that you asked for, and the campaign object is literally the exact same campaign object that, for instance, the campaign service .mutate accepts, and that's accepted in everywhere else in the AdWords a or the Google Ads API. Excuse me. Um, this isn't a CSV. This isn't something that needs to be parsed. And um, if you need, you know, th this is the exact same data object that uh, you can use in other parts of the API. So what you can do is actually take this object directly out of the Google Ads row and pass it to a mutate method if you wanted to change it. So in this example, you know, if you kind of wanted to iterate through your Google Ad rows results set here and find all the um, all the, all the Google Ads rows where metrics.clicks was above 27 during the last 30 days um, and set that and disable those campaigns, you can actually take this campaign object directly out of this result set, say status equals disabled, and send it right back um, to the campaign service, and that will work. There's no need to parse. There's no need to recreate a campaign object for the purposes of you know, sending it to the campaign service. Um, these data objects can use, be used directly um, for mutate calls to, um, to the services. And so this is a very powerful way to, um, to use this data to interact with the API. It sort of unifies the reporting and um, the mutate metrics through a data model, and it makes developer workflow much, much easier. OK, so one thing I do want to, so if we have a, a model like that, one thing I wanted to point out is, what do you do about all these um, predefined reports that exist in AdWords um, that primarily resolve around criteria, revolve around criteria metrics? So uh, performance data um, corresponding to these criteria-based reports are represented as their own top-level resource type. So give you a concrete example of what I'm trying to say is, um, that's great to have a SQL-like interface to all this. But what if I wanted to get a predefined report like the keyword performance report, or you know, there are others in AdWords like the um, the age, age range performance report, or something like that? Uh, it would be non-trivial to actually ask developers to craft their own SQL and pull those things back, um, and have to figure out you know what data exists in 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 those various reports and how to pull them together. So in order to expose these reports to you, we've actually exposed them as their own top level resources, uh, just like campaign ad group. Um, so they're called views. And so in this example here, the keyword performance report, um, this is the only one right now that's in V0. So there's going to be more as the incremental beta releases go out. But in the current V0, uh, the keyword performance report is represented by this resource called keyword view. And these can be queried just like uh, the other resources uh, using the Google Ads service. Um, so in the from statement here, in the from, part, from clause of this um, Google Ads query language, um, statement here, you see you're using keyword view, whereas in the previous example, we used campaign. Um, so you can, if you want to query the report like this, you can use, um, you do it using the from keyword view, and then you can select a whole bunch of stats. Um, and you can also 
so we also we document if you look in our documentation you'll see in addition to um this the stats we document which objects can be implicitly joined into this report which objects are related to this report um, that can be pulled back in a query like this so campaign ad group and ad group criteria are sort of all in the object hierarchy chain of a report like this and they're pullable uh if you will um in this statement so uh by looking at our documentation you can know that you can get this data back alongside of it and get a, uh, a result set that looks like this. And just like the previous example, you'll see um, the campaign and the ad group and the ad group criteria that you asked for come back um, as their own top level objects with their own embedded resource names. So these are actually the same objects that exist in the other parts of the API. So when you're pulling these reports and you wanna get access to the associated um, campaigns or ad groups, um, this, this becomes very powerful because you can pull them along um, and embed them in the report like this. And then when you get the results back, you can act on those um, as a developer immediately. Okay, so that is sort of a whirlwind tour of the API, how it's structured, how you make changes, how you query things. Um, and I think that's sort of what we wanted to cover here. Uh, the last slide I have before we go to questions is just a whole bunch of resource links. So I apologize that this is a video and these are not clickable, so I understand it's a little bit awkward. Um, but the, the, if you're gonna take away one resource here, um, it's the very first one there, the Google Ads API developer site. So developer.google.com slash Google dash ads API docs start. Uh, everything below it can actually be found there. Um, the ones I wanted to point out specifically, one that's very important here, I think is the migration guide. Um, this is a guide that goes through how you can transition from the AdWords API to using the Google Ads API. So it's focused on existing users. It talks about what's changed, what's stayed the same, uh, the things that you have to look out for when making a migration. So this is specifically designed uh, for that transition. So I'd strongly recommend taking a look at that guide uh, for existing AdWords API users. Um, we have the API reference itself. Um, this currently uh, covers all the gRPC endpoints. The, the RESTful documentation is still forthcoming. Uh, it will be there eventually. But if you look at the current iteration of our docs, you're going to find the gRPC endpoints there, uh, particularly the things like the um, that I was talking about, like the keyword view uh, and things like that. It documents what resources can be pulled together um, with those report views to come up with a valid um, SQL statement. So stuff like that is all documented there in the reference. Uh, the client library and code examples, we mentioned that in a previous slide. Um, release notes, these are actually really important um, and because as we release these V01, V02 incremental releases, the release notes are gonna tell you exactly what's changed, exactly what we have support for. Um, so please check out the release notes as we uh, iterate. And so if you wanna know when display campaigns are gonna uh, be supported and stuff like that, um, that's where we're gonna find it out. And the Google Ads query language, we have a whole guide here in our um, API docs query slash overview. This is a jumping off point to a sequence of articles that talks about the ads query language, its format, how to use it. Um, so seeing that it's front and center in the unified object retrieval um, service that we have here, uh, that's definitely a good thing to become familiar with and very intimate with. Um, on the right side of the slide here, um, taking a step back from the Google Ads API, if you want to understand why we made some of the design decisions that we made here about resources, services, and the architecture of the API, um, I'd strongly recommend taking a look at our cloud API design guide uh, hosted at cloud.google.com APIs slash design. Um, this is a design guide that covers all of our cloud um, based APIs and our modern API infrastructure. Um, but this is exactly what we built the Google Ads API on. So this is a great way to understand it. I've actually myself gone through this and a lot of uh, API um, architecture decisions, the way things are made a lot more sense to me. I was like, oh, that makes so much sense now. So it's actually a really, really good companion to trying to get your head around the new Google Ads API and, and the, its design. If you have this in one hand and look at the Google Ads API in the other, everything makes a lot more sense. Um, and also protocol buffers. Um, these are unique to the gRPC endpoint. So gRPC is essentially um, protocol buffers over HTTP2. And so the de protocol buffer developer guide can be very helpful if you're trying to interpret some of the some of the internal mechanics of how our client libraries work, especially for example the Java client libraries when you use um, protocol buffers and gRPC. Uh, you have to deal with some wrapper classes um, like uh, strings and ints and things like that actually are wrapped in these wrappers called string value, int value. And if you're wondering why that is, and like that's a bit curious and want to understand how to deal with these um, and all the cool things that you can probably do with that, um, that's all comes from the um, protocol buffer layer. So if you look at the protocol buffer developer guide, it will explain a lot of that and give you a lot more details and, and about the cool things you can do 
um, using that layer of the um, the the client library and gRPC. Finally, uh, we have two support options here. Um, for the beta program, we are offering dedicated support directly for by our AdWords support engineers. So you, anybody can write in uh, to adwordsapi-support at google.com. Um, one of our support engineers will generally get back to you within a day or two. So if you have any questions um, that you think you need a person, anymore, you need a, you need right away to get an answer to, please write, write into there. If you have any questions about um, the beta program getting set up, problems with the Google Ads API, encounter any bugs, um, write in there and we'll get back to you. And this, the final thing there is Google Ads API forum, also known as the existing AdWords API forum. Um, this is our community support option. Um, our support engineers also lurk there, so it's not completely, uh, you're not completely on your own with the community support. If you ask some good questions there or need some help, um, our API team does monitor and ask uh, and respond to questions there. So those are sort of the two um, modes we have for getting support, uh, and we recommend that you use them. Okay, so that slide's been up long enough. Um, I think I'm going to go over now and switch to the Q&A and start answering some of the Q&A in here. So let me see. I'm going to sort these by the um, by the number of upvotes. And the looks like the one on the top is, how long will the current AdWords API be supported? Um, so we do not, at this moment, have a any type of announcement or schedule um, about either a deprecation or a sunset or anything like that for the AdWords API. So for the time being, the AdWords API and the Google Ads API are going to be supported side by side um, for the foreseeable future through 2018 into 2019. Um, when we have announcements um, to be made about uh, continued support uh, of the Google Ads API, we'll definitely get those out to you as soon as we can. But right now, we're not making any announcements about that or have anything um, to say other than both of those APIs will be existing for the foreseeable future. Um, the slide that I had earlier shows, you know, we definitely have 2018-06 and 2018-09 releases uh, on the roadmap for the AdWords API, so that's not going anywhere. Um, and also, the current ad, the current Google, the current beta of the Google Ads API is in is a beta. So keep that in mind. It's not necessarily meant um, to be used and migrated to right now, right away. And in fact, you can't because you know a lot of the features that you would need for a full-fledged implementation aren't even there yet, um, speaking to the fact that V0 is literally only search campaigns. So the current AdWords API will be supported for the foreseeable future. We'll make announcements um, when, probably when we get closer to um, V1 and production release of the Google Ads API uh, about any roadmap changes that we need to make. OK, number two. Will the new API support handling multiple accounts? Campaigns add metrics from an MCC account. So MCC support is coming. Uh, it's not in the V0 release. Uh, you notice that like the managed customer service of the AdWords API doesn't have any analog yet in the current beta. Um, but that is coming. Uh, like I said, our aim is to have feature parity with the existing AdWords API. Um, so you are going to have the same um, MCC support um, forthcoming in a future incremental release as we build this out. So you can expect to see support um, for handling multiple counts in, in an MCC, like campaigns, ads, and metrics. Um, you will still need to handle them like on a per-call basis uh, at the client-customer level, like specifying client-customer IDs. For instance, the RESTful calls will still need the client-customer ID, but it's not going to be any different than the existing AdWords API. So managed account support is coming, and um, we'll be there soon. Um, just wait for a, fut a future iteration of the, the beta program, and we'll get MCC support in there. Um, this is another pre-question that a lot of people have upvoted. Will you be releasing a PHP client library? Absolutely. Um, PHP and Python are on track to fast follow, and actually, within the next few weeks, should be out to you. The next iteration of the um, like V01, uh, as we might want to, you might want to call it, the next um, iteration of the beta should include support for both PHP and client uh, and and Python in the client library. So those two are coming very very soon. Keep your eyes peeled, and um, that will be that will be out there soon. Um, let me see here. Uh, let me get to some of the questions that were asked live, and then I'll go back to um, the ones that were asked ahead of time. Will the Google Ads query language support more standard SQL functionality than AdWords query language currently does? Um, that's actually a good question. I don't know how to answer that as far as standard uh, SQL functionality. I can say that we do, we've do. we published a, a list. Uh, we, we've published the grammar for the Google Ads query language. And 
we may expand a couple of more features to it as it rolls out. Um, so I don't. So uh, I don't know. So as far as how that relates to what's currently supported in AdWords query language, I can say it's going it, to at least support the same amount. Um, whether it supports other things um, may not necessarily. Um, that's sort of to be determined. One thing I don't think we're going to be supporting group by because at uh, Google Ads query language sort of has. Um, it sort of has a built-in group by, if you want to think of it that way. It has implicit segmentation. So it does support segmentation and rolls um, the metrics up based on what's in the select clause. So one way to think of um, things, for instance, like um, group by statements is there's an implicit, um, there's sort of an implicit group by um, built into a lot of the AdWords or Google Ads query language statements. Um, so yeah, hopefully that covers that. Um, so I think that's sort of to be determined as far as what um, what features we're going to be adding to Google Ads query language uh, as it as it evolves. Um, so what other client libraries are coming? I think we mentioned that definitely uh, PHP and Python are on the docket. Um, as far as what's coming after that, I think that's still to be determined. But please, if you if you have needs um, in that department uh, and want to see um, like a Node.js or a Go or, or whatever language, please try to fill those out on the form. Um, when you supply, uh, you know, when you apply for the beta access, or give us feedback to that effect, so we know which client libraries to to prioritize. Okay, will the new search verb offer similar throughput and latency compared to the current reporting service? Uh, yes, it should, and hopefully, it should be better. Um, because what I alluded to before is uh, some of this sort of report for scalable query downloads. Um, the search verb on the Google Ads query service should, uh, I think, perform better than, the idea is to prefer, have a much more high performance API um, um, in however however we can than the existing reporting service. And the infrastructure that we've built does that. So there isn't any built in sort of latency or punishment for using that search verb um, when you compare it to the existing reporting service. So um, we're looking, we're, you should not see a regression there. Our aim is not to regress uh, in any way in that department and hopefully um, on the contrary, uh, we're hoping that you can see um, performance improvements um, for the new API infrastructure. So if anything, I think it will be better um, as far as throughput and latency is concerned. Uh, okay. Will the AdWords reporting tool be updated to support the new API? Uh, that's a great question. So AW reporting is an open source tool that we maintain. Um, whether it's updated to support the new API is actually sort of to be determined. I don't want to go ahead and say absolutely yet. I think we're still evaluating our current open source projects to see uh, which ones are sort of suitable going forward, which ones make the most sense, and if uh, there's if any changes need to be made as far as what we support and um, in the open source department. So I can't make any guarantees at this point about what's going to be sort of ported over to the new API. But we will sort of, I will take this question as sort of a an endorsement that um, you may want AW reporting to stick around. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, so, but right now I can't actually answer that question um, one way or the other. We're still sort of evaluating our open source offerings and see what needs to be ported and what we're going to change there. So, is report editor in the AdWords API in AdWords website based on the new API? Will the new API support all the functionalities of report editor? Um, I'm not, so the report editor is not necessarily based on this new API. You know, anything in the AdWords website isn't necessarily based on this, the new Google Ads API. Google Ads API is the external API infrastructure, but underneath the API, Google Ads API and the report editor may use um, some of the same underlying plumbing. Um, so whether there's gonna be um, API support for all the functionalities report editor, uh, I can't say. Um, I know what we're aiming for is feature parity with the existing AdWords API. Um, so whether that lines up exactly with what's in report editor, to be honest, I can't say. Um, but we're, what we're shooting for is feature parity with the um, with with the existing AdWords API. Okay, let's go back to some of the pre-existing questions because I know some of these had some upvotes here. Um, should the new API be used in production while it is still in beta? Uh, if not, do you have an estimate for when it'll be ready for production use? This is actually a great, great question. Um, this is this is a beta program, and we do not necessarily want people using the beta program uh, and beta API in um, their production environment. Um, that being said, it's not going to be in beta forever, and it will come out of beta, and at that point, it will be ready for production use. 
As far as an estimate on when that will happen, um, I don't have a timeline or a date. Um, hopefully later this year sometime. Um, that would, uh, but I, I, it's too, still too early to sort of give a roadmap and a, and a date on when that could happen. Um, but when that does happen, and another thing to, to, to mention here is both APIs can be used side by side. Uh, and you don't need to switch, uh, you don't need to go cold turkey from switching from one API to the other. Uh, so once the API is, once the Google Ads API is ready for use, uh, it's very, it's possible and almost expected that you can adopt some features at features ad hoc from the Google Ads API uh, and have those features running on the Google Ads API and have some of your stacks still running on the AdWords API. So while they cannot, well, the, we don't recommend the beta being used in production. Once it's ready for production, you can commingle, and we're. I think it's sort of like kind of a migration strategy here. It's not the, not to try to rewrite your whole product and and migrate to this new API all at once, but commingle calls to both APIs um, together and sort of gradually migrate um, to the new API component by component or whatever makes sense to you. Um, how do I enable logging in the new client libraries? Uh, that's a very good question. The answer is, as of right now, you do not. <laughs> we don't have support for enabling logging like we do in the existing uh, client libraries yet. However, that is something that we're working on, and future versions of the client library should have logging support. Will the new API support YouTube video campaigns? Um, so I, we don't have any announcement to make regarding the support for YouTube or video campaigns uh, right now. I, we know it's a very common and, and well asked for feature on our side. Uh, right now, we're going for feature parity with the existing AdWords API. That's our goal. And as far as um, support for YouTube video campaigns, we don't have any announcement to make about that. But we do know it's a very big ask from a very big group of developers. So that's we, we, we have that in mind. Um, but right now, we don't have anything to, to say on that front, to be honest. Um, OK, the current AdWords API supports two methods of managing ad extensions, extension setting services and feed services will both also be offered in the Google Ads API. So we are aiming, like I said, we are aiming for feature parity. So um, the generic answer here would be yes, but the specific answer I can say that I, I know that feed services are definitely as part of that um, feature parity um, are coming to, to the Google Ads API, obviously, and we're gonna have support for feeds exactly what that's going to look like um, if it's going to be sort of the extension setting service along with um, feed services or if it's going to look a little bit different i don't i don't know right at this point and i can't say um but again i'm going to just fall back on sort of that feature parity um answer because that's sort of our goal um if so if it's not explicitly extension setting service we will definitely be offering something that offers uh, the same feature set and the same level of convenience so um Overall, those things should be there, but the exact form of um, that they're going to take in the Google Ads API may be um, a little bit more open to um, um, open to interpretation, <laughs> so to speak. But overall, yes, um, feature parity should um, should dictate that the feed the feed services um, and their corresponding um, uh, features will be there. So, are there any performance benefits to using views over queries? Uh, that's actually a good question that I do, I could say I don't actually know the answer to. Um, I think you're hitting the same underlying um, services and infrastructure, so they I would think that they could be very similar in their performance. But that's something we may have to hold off for and get an answer at a later time if um, there are definite perf performance implications of using one method of getting um, data over the other. So. This one, thank you for asking this, and that's a great question. It's so good that I actually don't know. Um, but thank you for asking. We will make a note of this and try to make sure that we address this in future documentations and best practices um, to see to address whether there are any limitations on using one or the other. Uh, OK. Uh, will there be an ability to get compared to date range for performance data in one query? So multiple date ranges for performance data. So last seven days plus last six months. Or do we still need to make two queries? Uh, that's a good question. I think, as of right now, with the query language, I think this still will have to be made in two queries. Um, but I will take this as sort of like a feature request to see if uh, if there's some way we can sort of composite those things like that. But um, things like this that sort of comprise two separate date ranges, I think, will likely have to be split into two separate queries. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna keep going here. Where can we find the list of reports, like example, the keyword view? 
Okay, so these can actually be found in the API documentation. Go to the API reference that covers sort of the gRPC um, uh, documentation. And so, what, like I was saying before, these keyword views are actually top level resources, just like a campaign and ad group. You're going to see a keyword view listed in the resources section of the API reference. So go to the, the API reference on a developer site, um, go to resources, and you'll actually see a resource called keyword view. Uh, I believe keyword view is literally the only one that's there right now because that's the only one we support. But as the um, incremental releases come to the API, uh, you will see more views show up there. So you can get the list of reports currently by going to the resources section of the gRPC documentation and looking for the resources that end in the suffix view. What will the network band with impact um, of downloading both metrics and dimension data? Any suggestions on how to use the new API if network bandwidth becomes an issue? So using the gRPC endpoints and protocol buffers, uh, you're going to get, um, so as, as far as like bandwidth issues, those are as compressed as you can get. So that's going to be relatively small. And also keep in mind when even you're getting metrics and dimension data um, or metrics and attribute data together, you're still only getting the attributes and data that you asked for. So in the select statement, you know, you're not getting an entire campaign object returned back. Um, or you know, tons and tons of metrics, similar to how we have selectors in the AdWords API. Um, the select statement of this of the AdWords query language will limit the data that you that comes back in effect. Um, so if bandwidth is an issue, um, be sure to select only the fields that you actually need and want in your report. You know, a campaign object is huge. Um, it has a lot of different settings and associated you know subobjects and things like that. The but you're not going to get the entire campaign object back. You're just going to get back the fields of the campaign object um, that are in your select statement. So I guess uh, on on this uh, on this issue, I would say very judicious and careful crafting of the the um, select statement is analogous to choosing the right selectors when you're using the existing AdWords API. So you can use that to sort of limit uh, the bandwidth implications of of pulling down that amount of data. Um, probably an obvious question, but assuming the signing up for the beta won't impact existing API usage, can they be used side by side? Um, yep, no, there's no, these signing up for the beta doesn't affect your existing API usage in any way. They both use the same developer token, but that's about it. Uh, and yet they can both be used side by side and we actually expect people to be using them side by side. Um, let's see. Uh, is it possible to retrieve invoices from the new API? Uh, so right now we don't have any features that, that are supposed, uh, that are planning to support invoices from the new API. Um, but if you're trying to do that, try, reach out to us on AdWords API dash support. There may be some existing APIs that you can use. Uh, and to that end, they may um, they may find their way into the Google Ads API one way or the other. So um, there's nothing specific about the Google Ads API that's going to involve invoices. Um, but there are some existing services that may be able to help you. Um, so reach out to us at AdWords API support about this question. And we might be able to either help you with the existing API um, or see if there's any way to get this data for you that might be better. Um, OK, let me see. Um, I think that's most of it. I think there are a couple more questions here. Uh, OK, sorry sorry, it took so long um, to get to these, um, but it's a whole bunch. Uh, is it possible to retrieve invoices? Oh, this is the same question. OK, same answer. Great. <laughs> um, here's another one. Why remove the reporting service? Um, the new way was how it was four years ago, so why switch back? This is actually a very, very astute observation. Uh, if you've been using the AdWords API for um, for a long time, indeed, four years ago, we did have sort of a unified method of returning uh, impressions and clicks and things like that, um, along with um, the SOAP services in the current AdWords API instead of the, um, the current setup where you have reports and SOAP side by side. Um, and we consciously moved away from that. We said reporting only, stop using the metrics on the SOAP objects. So... Um, one of the reasons to switch back is there were benefits of doing that. Um, you know, having your your metrics and data in the same place uh, was beneficial. However, back then when we did it, there were some um, drawbacks, uh, mainly for our infrastructure, the way that it was implemented in the SOAP stack, um, there were performance implications, and also it was a little bit different from how we do it now. Um, there were sort of the metrics were sort of embedded in the SOAP objects um, and not necessarily kind of broken out into their own. Um, objects and metrics classes that can easily be used uh, with other parts of the API. So it is a little bit different, but I can, so I guess the answer to this question is, 
um, we're trying to get back to that sort of design, um, but now we have the infrastructure and a better data model to do it and unify these in a, in a proper way. So that's sort of why we're going back is um, we kind of have a way to do it now that sort of satisfies some of the constraints that made it um, sort of prohibitive to keep it that way four years ago, if that makes sense. Um, and finally, this is another question that was asked um, in the pre-questions. Um, some of our customers need segment report, um, a query like select date metrics from a customer where uh, date during the last 30 days returns an error. So is this supported? Yes, this should be supported. Um, we can trouble, I'd recommend troubleshoot, uh, writing into AdWords API dash support so we can help troubleshoot the exact error. Um, I know we have some requirements about, um, so in a, in a statement like this, you may need to include an ID, uh, mainly um, the customer ID. So <laughs> when you get back your, your Google as rows, you know which one like date, metrics um, correspond to, so if you get back Google as 50 Google ad rows with date and metrics, you're gonna need some sort of identifier in there to understand what sh which one belongs um, to say like which customer or something like that. So you might need an ID in there. Um, but yeah, this is so overall the question is yes, this should be supported. This might be uh, just a particular error that we need to, <clears throat> excuse me, to troubleshoot. So please write into AdWords API dash support and we can troubleshoot um, this particular um, statement for you. Um, Okay, change history. Yes, I don't know if this is a question, but um, change history, let's talk about it. Uh, we are planning to um, bring you much more detailed and useful change history um, in the Google Ads API as as part of, as a feature as this rolls out. Um, so you will be seeing, I think, um, the AdWords API has change history support. Um, one of the efforts in the Google Ads API is to provide a much more um, robust view and much more usable version of the change history uh, for everybody. So while I didn't cover it here in the presentation, mainly because it's not in the current API yet and I don't have much to go on or much to present, look for that in future incremental updates to the API. We will be offering a change history API that we think holds significant improvements over how it's currently done in the AdWords API. Uh, will, the new, whoop, will the new API support retrieving balance of a customer? Um, so, Again, right now, I think feature parity is our target. Um, I know that a lot of people have asked about retrieving things like account level billing balances, and we've heard those features uh, requests. And well, I can't make any promises. Uh, we are working on uh, addressing as many as we can. So stay tuned. Uh, it's possible that we may be able to address this in a future version, um, future incremental version, or in the Google Ads API as it rolls out. Okay, I think we've covered all the questions. Thank you, everybody, for staying on the line so long. I wanted to make sure we got to everybody. Um, yeah, that's going to be the end of the webinar. So thank you for joining. I hope you found it useful. Um, again, write in the Google Ads API dash support if you have any questions or use the forum to discuss it uh, with everybody else. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And that's going to do it. Have a good night or good morning, wherever you are. <laughs> Take care.